Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Freedom Elite 30 FE. This is one of the largest in the lineup and it is a bunk model. So if you need to sleep a lot of people, this is one that'll do it. We'll go around, I'll show you all the different sleeping spaces, uh, kind of show you what it's like with the slides in. I'll tell you what I think that they nailed and what maybe that they missed a little bit. So let's actually start off on the kitchen. You'll see the L-shaped style kitchen here. Uh, we'll start actually up top. So if you notice, you have the microwave right there. Very easy to access. Oh, another thing. You will see that we have uh, a bunch of fog and everything in here. You'll see it on the glass. You'll see a little bit on the uh, cabinetry. The reason for that, folks, is we're in Michigan. I just pulled this in from outside. Uh, yeah, you can still see my breath a little bit. It's cold in here, so that's what's happening. It's starting to warm up. Anyway, uh, so microwave up top, you have the hood right underneath there, but not, not even a hood, right? It's just basically a piece of metal with a light on there, but it still kind of serves a, a little bit of a purpose while it may not be filtered. It, le it lights up your cooktop and anything that you're cooking collects here where it's easier to clean than on the bottom of your cabinetry on wood. Storage up top, open that up for you so you can kind of take a look. You'll notice that it does go all the way back. A little bit tough to reach in there, but it does give you that storage space, which I think is important. Underneath, you have a high-rise pull-out faucet, so you gotta love that. Good stuff, makes it easier to wash and rinse dishes. Sink top covers, that way you can utilize all this as prep space. Because the sink top covers and the recessed cooktop with the glass cover, it actually gives us good prep space. Otherwise, uh, it would be somewhat difficult to make anything happen here. And I also like that this is split, so that way if I need just, you know, part of the sink open and I wanna work here, or vice versa, you know, if I wanna leave this one on and have all this extra prep space, I can do that. You will see the undermount stainless steel bowl, big bowl in here as well. Not only size, but it's also fairly deep. So that way, if you have some residential pots and pans, chances are you'll be able to uh, wash them out no problem in there. Of course, back here in the corner, kind of tucked away is all of our extra space. You'll see you have an electrical outlet up top. So it gives you a spot to plug in that coffee maker if you want to use that one, or you have the pop-up tower right here. So again, you can plug the coffee maker directly into that. Spice rack right behind the cooktop. You'll see again, as I mentioned, the recessed cooktop there. Extra countertop space over to the side, always worth mentioning, pops up. This is a uh, thermal foil style countertop. It's not T-mold, so you don't have to worry about, you know, these inside or outside corners having that molding pop off, which is something I hate. So I love that more manufacturers are going to this. If we fold this up and back, that'll expose your three burner cooktop. Front one is high output. This is a newer Furion uh, oven here. You'll see a couple things, this little light switch. So you flick that one on and your knobs light up. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, the oven light's not on. This must be for the oven light. But it's the oven light and the knob lights. Uh, that one's kind of a slight miss for me from Furion. I can't think of an instance where, you know, I would be like, oh man, I am super mad that my knobs are on, but my oven light is too, more than likely. I would just want my oven light and not the knobs. My opinion, it should have been knobs light up, oven light lights up, knobs do not, but whatever. I guess it's a minor thing, right? Underneath the hats, you have the pull-out drawer. Uh, again, this is something I'm not quite sure about. I, I like the idea of it that, hey, this gives you a spot to you know, put some of your pots and pans, but it's not very big. I don't know if they located anything you know, basically behind that, but I'm curious as if we would have just had a door there you know, if we would have had maybe some more space, I can't really see back there. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess let me know what your guys' thoughts are, you know, on the, on the lights. Can you think of when that would be useful? Let me know. Right over to the side here. This, though, I love. I think they nailed it here. They gave you a dedicated spot for a trash can. That's something you don't find in very many Class C motorhomes. I think this was uh, a perfect move by them. It comes with a trash can. You don't have to worry about trying to find one that fits the space. Nice dedicated spot for it. Some drawers. This one, obviously not super useful, but that again is because you have that deep bowl sink. Underneath that, this is probably where your flatware will be, and then you have one additional. Moving over, we kind of get into the main living area. So you do have storage all the way across the top. It is strut supported for easy one hand operation. Take a look underneath that. Some LED lights here, as well as speaker and an electrical outlet. You have a speaker on each side. A lot of manufacturers will put both speakers on one. They did kind of divide it up, which is great. So that way, you know, everyone can kind of enjoy the music. This is a jackknife style sofa, removable armrests. Just pull them out just like so. You will have to pull them up and out if you want to fold down the jackknife. 
which I'll open that up for you so you can take a look underneath there. You will see the uh, seat belts under there, and then you have a heat duct that's running through there as well. So if you do store anything under there, just make sure you don't smash that duct. But that does drop down into a bed. Cup holders right back here too. Now one of the things that I do enjoy is the fact that they have several USB ports throughout. Now in a like travel trailer, fifth wheel, sure they're nice, but I really like them in the motorhome because these are 12 volt. So as you're going down the road, if you need to charge your cell phone, you know your standard 120 isn't gonna work, but these right here will. So you can just take you know, your cord, plug it in right into the USB, plug it into your phone or your tablet. May not charge your tablet very well off 12 volt. I haven't tried it, but I know it will charge your phone, which is great. Um, if we take a look up top, this of course is the cab over. One of the big things about Freedom Elite, one of the things they do very, very well is the cab over, folks. This is 500 pound weight capacity. Most manufacturers don't have that. It's like 300 to 350, uh, which you know for me is kind of borderline pushing having two people up there. 500, no problem. I love that. Easy to make the bed up. You have a ladder. You'll see that this does strap down right there, so that way your ladder's not flying all over as you're traveling down the road. And the sides, you can actually lift this up. You'll see you have kind of like a foot locker there. Uh, you'll have this, uh, oh, nope, they changed it on this side. So this side is just a cushion, but you have the one. Uh, but again, easy to make that up. You have the TV that is on a swing arm mount, so you can swing that around so you're able to watch it from several different points. Another thing is right down here at the floor. You'll see it's not a very big step. In the main living area, down into the cab, it's not a huge step. You don't feel like you're you know, gonna fall, drop, anything like that. Pretty standard Ford cab. If you've seen one, you've probably seen them all. So there it is, your uh, E-Series, you know, cup holders there, your central dash radio. Uh, it does have a couple things. So again, USB port right up here, as well as your HDMI. And then if you still use the old style cigarette lighter, uh, you have that as well. So you have a couple of those. And then your center dash, you know, Bluetooth, so that way you can hook up your phone. Pretty handy. On the driver's side is the dinette. So I like this too, because not only is this great for conversation, right? Because you can have, you know, uh, a person traveling each side of the dinette, plus a couple people here on the sofa, everyone's talking, having a good time. But also once you do reach your destination, having the campsite dinette allows you to look out to your campsite, which is what I wanna see. Uh, plenty of cup holders. You'll see you have two built in the table, a couple more right there. This is a dream style dinette. So to make it into a bed, you have this lever right here. You'll flip that lever over just like so slide your legs out of the way you actually have to push the, or pick the cushions up a little bit but then that just slides right down so you do have to remove all the cushions to make it slide down otherwise it hits the cushions but it is pretty easy uh all in all to make it into a bed you just got to make sure that once you put it back into a table you lock it back in place or else you're going to go to get up and it'll fall underneath the cabinets a couple lights there again as i mentioned a speaker another usb port so that way anyone that's sitting here can charge their devices storage all along the top uh, you have your roof-mounted AC that is ducted throughout the entire RV. So we make our way over to the entrance. Uh, pretty easy stuff here. You have a grab handle in order to assist you in exiting the RV. Your battery bank is located underneath this step. You will see your switches for your lights, your uh, power awning, step light, battery disconnect to kill all power, and you have the solar charge controller. This one is prepped for solar on the roof. So if you want a solar panel, controller is already hooked up, everything's prepped up there, super easy to do. Uh, again, more storage there, fridge, freezer combo. Open that guy up, let you take a look. You can access this when the slide's closed in, which is important to my opinion. Making our way back a little bit further, main control panel, everything's located there, everything you need. Again, you know, as I said, it's kind of uh, warming up in here, thawing out. Thermostat will be located there. This one does control both your furnace as well as your AC. And then you get into the bunks. So you see you have the top fold down bunk, 250 pound weight capacity on there. The thing I do like about this is both bunks have a TV. So you'll see the top one right there. If we pull this out, your bottom TV is located there. That way the kids aren't fighting over who gets the TV. So both can have it or, you know, hey, you can take them out and say no one gets TV. That's completely up to you. Uh, another thing, this does have, the TVs do have a built-in DVD player, USB uh, port, as well as a micro SD card. So, you know, if you want like a slideshow or something on there, you can. More important, in my opinion, is the DVD player, so that way the kids can watch movies too. This is also a dinette, uh, obviously, but I like that because it gives you another spot to eat, right? If you have a lot of people, or maybe, you know, the, the kids just kind of want to hang out back here and eat, you can do that. The bathroom, side aisle right over here. Let's show you the toilet. I'll take a seat here. Um, so 
it is it is a little a little odd to get to just because you have this so when you're sitting down you know you kind of contend with that but once you sit here it's not too bad my right leg is bumped right up against here my right shoulder you know it's, it's a little tight on the right side uh, but again it's not bad porcelain bowl as you would expect super easy to clean it's kind of on the pedestal here so it's lifted a little bit so it is you know kind of almost like a comfort height toilet a little bit easier to get up and off of um, over to the side, nice big countertop, storage underneath, plumbing access right there, stainless steel bowl, big mirrored medicine cabinet up top, you can see that there, electrical outlet. Over to this side is the shower, I'll take a step in here, excuse me, so I'm six foot tall, uh, nice thing about this shower though is basically the whole thing is a skylight, so it gives you that extra height, so seriously you can be, you know, six three in here and still be able to shower, and because of the shower curtain, the way it kind of uh, it's what, con convex, I guess, right? It kind of comes out a little bit. So I can actually turn in here, you know, I'm, I'm holding it because it's spring loaded. But as you can see, I, I can turn and you know, I'm not brushing up against the curtain, which is nice. So as far as showers go, it's actually a really nice shower, very sturdy in the floor plan too. Uh, I have stepped in some manufacturers where the shower isn't quite as sturdy as I would like. I feel like you're gonna fall through the floor. Definitely not the case there. For the master bedroom, the door, you just push down on that guy right there. That will let you close off the door for privacy. If we take a look, you have your queen bed here in the center. Underneath, you will see, well, you have, whoops, you have all sorts of stuff here. Normally, normally this is screwed down so you can't open it and it tells you this is not storage. But I'll open it up because it looks like we opened it, uh, probably getting this one ready to prep so you can kind of see what's in there. But over to this side is our storage compartment. So that's kind of what I was trying to get at there. And then on both sides, you'll see your nightstand. Again, electrical outlet, USB port. You also have the cigarette style over to the side. So a couple 12 volt outlets there. Storage down underneath. You have another electrical outlet on this side. So when you are camping, if you have a CPAP machine, it can be on either side. Storage across the top and you have a little side wardrobe there. Window in the back and at the foot of the bed, Voila, this will be your main wardrobe. So you have the small one over to the side, which you know, I'm sure is what I would get. My wife would get this one, but hey, that's the way it goes, right? Uh, you get the drawer underneath, plenty of space there. A couple more drawers here. Also behind this guy is TV hookup. So if you want a TV, this is where you'll hook it up at. Otherwise you have the shelf built in, you just have more storage. With the slides closed up and in travel mode, you can see the kind of the main walkway you have right here how much distance you have between the sofa and the dinette. And again, how perfect this is for travelers, because that way everyone's nice and close, you can have great conversation. Also, you have access to everything you need, including the refrigerator. You can open that up far enough to get to just about anything, with maybe the exception of eh, even that drawer. So you can, again, you can get to pretty much everything there. And you can make your way on back. You'll see you can get into the bathroom. And if you need to pull over and have a nap, you can access the bed as well. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Freedom Elite 30FE. This one is built on the Ford E450 chassis, putting out 305 horsepower, 420 foot-pounds of torque. One of the things I do like about the 2020 color scheme is the fact that because they use a white chassis, they also used a white body. A lot of manufacturers go to like a tan body or something like that. Now granted, it needs to be washed, but uh, having the white makes it a lot more seamless in my opinion. Uh, you'll see the graphics as well. They're not super big and swooshy. There's a couple of them, but a lot more, uh, you know, just kind of streamlined color blocking, which I definitely like that a lot more. You have the uh, steps in order to get in. You know, they're, they're nothing too fancy. It's not like anything super fancy and fiberglass, pretty basic, but it does do it, it serve its purpose there. Mirrors, of course, come out to the sides. That way you can see beyond the body. You have the power awning, touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go right back in. Uh, and you have pretty good usable camp space here, especially because that power awning is over your TV. There's also an LED light strip, so if you wanna light that up at night, it's perfect location to light up the campsite. As I mentioned, you have the TV located there. I, I took the liberty of opening up all the compartments, uh, but this one, you can see the TV sound bar underneath for great sound quality, it's Bluetooth capable. Underneath that, you have this big storage area. This is a rotocast bin here too. The thing I like about that is it's easy to wash out. You know, you load this up with firewood, not a problem. You can just take a hose, hose everything out, take a power washer to it. It's not gonna rust or anything like that. Of course, our entrance is there with the grab handle. 
electrical outlet right down underneath if you need to plug anything in. And then again, another bin here. So some pretty decent storage with the Rotocast bins on the camp side. Make way back a little bit further. So these storage compartments here, a little bit tougher to reach to slide open. I mean, you know, I can obviously still do it, but uh, you know, this is, these are some of them where you probably want to open them up before you open the slide. Again, just a little bit easier, but same thing, a couple of Rotocast bins, you'll see the lights in there. Uh, they try to do uh, what they can to light up all the outside storage bins. So if you're accessing it at night, it does make it quite easy. You'll also see your propane quick connect. So it's in its separate compartment. It's not hanging down, very easy to access if you want to hook up a grill. Um, right here, don't want to forget this one. So you have another storage area there. Uh, you can see, you know, this one's not rotocast, kind of built into the side, but it is quite large. Now this one's not lit up because they don't have electrical running in there, but it is still a good size storage area. Once we get around the other side, you'll see uh, a nice big storage space though. Rear mounted ladder so you can climb up onto the roof. Of course, we have some snow up there currently. Uh, backup camera is built into that rear tail light there, so that way you can see behind you as you're backing up. Square tubular bumper with end caps gives you a spot to store that sewer hose. It's also painted to match the bodies. So they put the grip tape on there so you don't slip. 8,000 pound hitch underneath, folks. That is something you generally do not see on a Class C. Usually it is 5,000 pounds. Now, I always tell everyone, don't think you're going to fully load this up and tow 8,000 pounds behind you. It's just not going to happen. It's still the same E450 chassis that's on a lot of other Class Cs that have a 5,000 pound hitch. So yes, you have a higher hitch rating, but if you plan on towing heavier weight, you're going to have to make up for it by carrying less. Coming around to the side, look at that huge storage area over here. I love this. You know, I have uh, little ones and we have a lot of big kids toys, you know, we have wagons, we have water tables, we have, uh, you know, easy ups, all this extra stuff. And this gives you a very convenient spot in which you can store all of that. City water inlet located there, black tank flush right down underneath and fresh tank fills located right up here. So all of your water connections are pretty close. Of course, fuel fill, you know, it's going to need fuel to run. Uh, underneath that, I'll pop this guy open. This will be Nice, easy access to your plumbing. So you see your termination right there, black tank valve, gray tank valve, all of it's located there. I like the fact that it's raised up. What a lot of manufacturers do is that in order to access it, it's hanging way down here and you know, you, you kind of get something that's off level and boom, there it goes. You knock all your plumbing off here. They raise it up and give you access by cutting a door in. I think that is much, much smarter. 30 amp power cord plugs in there. You have the uh, cable inlet right up above it. Outside shower with hot and cold water access. You'll see your propane fill located there. So we drop down here, another storage area. Uh, more importantly here, in my opinion, is this. The fact that you have an automatic transfer relay built into a class C. That is not something again that all class C's have. What that does for you is it makes running your generator much easier. If you don't have that, you have what they call a Slater box, which when you run your generator, you have to take your power cord and basically plug it back into your unit. That way the generator will feed power into the unit. This eliminates all that. You turn your generator on, boom, you're good to go. You plug it into shore power, boom, you're good to go. It just makes everything simpler. And speaking of the generator right over to the side, there you are, come and zone in 4,000 watt Jenny to run everything you need inside this beauty. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Freedom Elite 30FE. If you're interested in this family Class C and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what you think they missed, or if you were designing the RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.